Okay, in this video, I'd like to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number three, and I'm going to talk about the crosser vector product. I'd like to draw your attention to our website, universityphysicstutorials.com. The previous video to this is number two, where I discussed the dot or scalar product. So, first of all, just a small bit of revision. If I have a vector A, there are three things which I can do with it. I can multiply A by a scalar, and I'm telling you there's only one way you can do that. I could also multiply A by a vector. And there are two ways I can multiply A by a vector. I can take its dot or scalar product, or I can take its cross or vector product. Now, what's important here to know is that if you take the if you multiply A by a scalar, well then you're going to get back um, you're going to get back a vector. If you multiply a, if you take the dot product with a vector, you're going to get back a scalar, and I did that in the last video. And if you multiply it by another vector taking the cross product, you're going to get back a vector. So we're talking about the cross product, that means we're going to get back a vector. So it has components, i, g, and k, for example. Okay, so next, how do we write a vector? There are lots of different ways of writing a vector. So you can have a sub x, you will say the vector a could be a sub x in the i hat plus a sub y in the j hat plus a sub z in the k hat direction. And I said in the past that you can write this as a sub x, a sub y, and a sub z, where we kind of imply the fact that it's got these unit vectors. But there's another clever way of looking about looking at this, and it's using a small bit of linear algebra, where you, we already assume this to be a uh, to, we assume this uh, excuse me to be a matrix. So what we say is that a is an actual fact, the row vector a sub x, a sub y, and a sub z multiplied by the column vector i hat, j hat, k hat. Now, I'm sure you've done a small bit at the very least of linear algebra, and you realize if you actually did this, you get back that perfectly there. So we can look at this, and in actual fact, you could think about this as your, uh, you could, yeah, you know, just think about that as matrix multiplication, very straightforward. So you got a, you know, you got this row vector multiplied by this particular column vector. And I'm going to kind of use this in order to get the, the, the scalar product. So as normal, let's define another vector. I'm going to call it B. And we're going to have B sub x, the i hat direction, plus B sub y in the j hat direction, plus B sub z in the k hat direction. Or we can talk about in this kind of implied unit vector notation, we have B sub x, B sub y, and B sub z. Of course, it can be also written as a row by a column vector multiplication. So, just like with the dot product, I'm going to give you the answer. So, A cross B is written out like that. Notice they're vectors. And it's going to be the magnitude of A multiplied by the magnitude of B multiplied by the sine of the angle in between. So, let's say this is the vector A. Let's say this is the vector B. Well, the angle between them here is theta. Okay, so now whereas cos measures how perpendicular or how parallel or anti parallel or perpendicular something is, sine looks at something different. Now, to be honest, I, I could get into the, the geometry, but I don't particularly want to because I just want to show you and um, I want to show you how to calculate the cross product. So, this is one way you just get their magnitudes and you multiply by the sine of the angle in between. But to be honest, that rarely, if ever, happens for electromagnetism, because more often than not, what you need to do is multiply their components. So, without proof, because I'm not talking about a course in linear algebra, I'm going to say that the that if you take the cross product of a and b, it's equal to the determinant of the corresponding three by three matrix. And you say what three by three matrix? Three by three matrix. We have three components here, three components here. But we also have another three components if we assume, or excuse me, if we use the, the unit vectors themselves. So let's say we have i hat, we have j hat, and we have k hat. Okay? So what you do first of all is you write your unit vectors down. Then what you do is you write your first the components of your first vector. In this case it's a. So I write a sub x, which is i hat, a sub y, and a sub z. Then I write down the components of my second part, b sub x, b sub y, and b sub z. And you, then you have this straight, two straight lines. That means the determinant. And we know that the determinant 
is equal to a cross b. Okay, just you have to trust me because I'm not proving it. It's a small piece of linear algebra, so we need to get the determinant. And now I'm going to talk about it, how we get the determinant of this three by three matrix in a moment, but it involves getting the determinant of a two by two matrix. So let's say we have a, a two by two matrix, and we call so it's two by two, and we say they call the components A D and C A B C D. Well, the determinant is equal to A D minus B C. So we have A multiplied by D and we take away from it b multiplied by c. That's the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. So in order to get the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, we need to know, of course, that we're talking about vectors. So in the i-hat direction, what you do is you, you cross out everything that goes through i-hat. So that leaves these. And what we do is we take the determinant of the remaining, remaining, remaining components, and that is the i-hat uh, uh, contribution. To get the j-hat component, you cross off everything going through j, and you get the, the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix remaining. And finally, to get the k-hat component, you do something similar. You cross out these, and you get, we'll say, a, a, b, a, a sub x, a sub y, b sub x, b sub y, and you get that determinant. So let's go ahead and do it. So in the i-hat direction, so crossing out, when we're, we're left with these four here, so a sub y, um, b sub z minus a sub z b sub y and this is in the i hat direction. Next what we do is we take away, and this is important, this sign is very important. So next we're looking at the j hat direction. So we cross out the middle, we cross out the top and left it 1, 2, 3, 4. So you have a sub x b sub z minus a sub z b sub x. And I'm sure you can see there is symmetry. Next, I said the signs are important. There's a plus. We cross out these terms and these terms, leaving us a sub x, b sub y, minus a sub y, b sub x. And this is in the k hat direction. Now, you might see some authors or some people saying they have a plus here. And if they do that, all they do is they swap the signs in the middle. Okay? But I prefer to think about it. Um, I prefer not to do it that way. Okay, so I prefer to have the minus out here, this is plus, and this is minus. Okay, because then there's symmetry, and I just remember that this is a negative here. And that's how you do the dot product. So let's say, and I'm kind of pushing ahead a small bit, really, but let's say if I wanted to get the dot, the cross product between something, the nabla and our vector. And you might say, well, what's the nabla? Well, look, let's just accept that there is a such thing. And if I'm doing it, I'm, I have i hat, j hat, and k hat. And I'm going to write the components of my nabla. Just, just accept it for the moment. It's not really important. And then we're going to have a sub x, a sub y, and a sub z. So this time, if I take the cross product here, or the scalar or vector product, notice that if I multiply ddx by a sub y, I'm actually getting the x derivative of a sub y. Or I'm getting ddy of a sub x, which is the y derivative of a sub x. So that's possible too. But I'm just showing you that there. I'm not, I'm not actually. I'm not explaining it at all. I'm just showing that it's possible, and I'll explain that when I discuss the cross product. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com.